Hello and welcome everyone. So in this video we will go through the steps required from start to finish synchronizing our on-premise uh, Active Directory users uh, to Azure Active Directory. Now why would we want to do this? Uh, the reason is is to enable us to use our on-premise AD credentials, um, usernames and passwords um, to log into Azure in the form of either the portal um, or an application in Azure, we would need to sync uh, Active Directory that contains all our users for our organization. So as we can see from the diagram, we have our on-premise Active Directory and we have clients that need to log in or authenticate using um, Azure AD apps. Um, for example, like Office 365 or Windows VMs. A prime example of this would be a Windows Virtual Desktop within Azure. So users would need to log in over the internet uh, using the RD web interface um, to log in to gain access to their desktops. Um, hence, they require their username synced to Azure AD. And the way we do this is to use an application called AD Connect to perform the sync to Azure. Then we will be able to use our AD credentials to log into those applications. So before we get started, please subscribe to the channel. Videos posted weekly on cloud technical guides and certification. I'll give you a moment to do this. Either use a link in the description or bottom right hand corner of the screen. Thank you. Okay, so what's covered in this video? Um, we will add our custom domain name for login to Azure. We will build a domain controller, add users, configure DNS, um, add our domain suffixes, um, install AD Connect applications, run some PowerShell to sync our users to Azure, and then we will test from that point. So let's get started. So first of all, we need to add our custom domain name. So in this case, this is cloudinspired.co.uk. So a domain name normally forms part of your username uh, or your email address for the identifier for many directory resources to log in. So we need to add our domain and verify that in Azure, we can use cloudinspired.co.uk within our Azure Active Directory. So if we go to Azure Active Directory, and if we scroll down and we go to custom domains, then if we add a custom domain, so in this case, cloudinspired.co.uk, now what we need to do is we need to verify this with our DNS provider. So we need to take this config and actually put it into uh, our DNS provider. So this is just an example. We need to take our destination or points address from Azure and then we need to create a DNS record within our ISP that hosts our domain. So in this case, from an Azure perspective, we've actually verified um, that domain now. Bearing in mind, when we change this within our ISP, um, basically it can take up to 72 hours um, for it to propagate over the internet. So now we want to download the AD Connect application to enable us to sync our users. We will install that later, but first of all, we'll install a domain controller now. So here we will create a domain controller that will contain all our users um, to sync up to Azure. So in this demo, the domain controller we'll be using is actually installed within Azure for ease of provisioning. Okay, but this could uh, be in your data center or on-premise environment um, to enable the sync uh, to occur to Azure. So I won't go through how to build a VM uh, in this video, as there are other videos in my channel showing this. I'll put the links in the description if you need that. So we can RDP to the VM that's been created. Um, Currently, this is a member server, not part of any domain, and we will promote to the domain controller or DC for short. So if we copy the public IP address to RDP to it, type NSTSC in the command line, and then RDP using that IP address. So now if we log in with our credentials, click OK. 
So what we'll do now is we will promote um, this server to a domain controller. So if we go up to manage, add roles, click next, click next. And then if we choose domain services and then install. So this starts the domain controller installation process. Now within the installation window, once this is done, we can see we get a little link to ask us to promote this to domain controller. So if we click that link, so we get three options here. We can add a domain controller to an existing domain. We can add a new domain to an existing forest, or we can add a new forest. Because this is a completely new forest, we need to choose a, a new forest to create a new domain controller. So our root domain name in this case is cloudinspired.local. So if we now choose a directory services restore password, now this is important if you need to restore your directory at any point. Um, so you'd enter this password at that, that stage, yeah? So if we click next and then click next and then the NetBIOS name should just automatically fill with a cloud inspired. And then if we click next and choose all the default paths for our database, uh, our logs and our sysvol folder. And then once all the prerequisites checks are done, uh, check this to see if they're okay. Uh, and if all good, click install. We'll speed up the video after this point once the domain control has been uh, installed and promoted. Okay, now that's now done. We've rebooted the domain controller and now we'll log back in. So now we want our domain controller to have a static address, um, a static IP, so we don't want this to change. So we can do this within the Azure portal to make sure this is maintained. So within the VM, if we go down to, to networking, and then if we click on the network interface that we want to assign the static address to, then if we drill down, and then if we choose static, and then we can see our IP address of our domain controller there and then click save. And now we can see the private IP address is a static address, which is good. We also need to make sure that our VNet, our virtual network, has the IP address of our domain controller for DNS. So if we go into virtual networks, then if we go into DNS servers, then if we choose custom, then we can type the IP address of our domain controller for DNS, which in this case is 10.0.0.8. Then if we click save. Also, the last thing within our uh, domain controller, if we go to networking and have a look at the network card, we want to point the, the DNS addresses here um, to all our domain controllers. So we've just got one DC here for demo purposes, but in a normal production environment, you'd have two or more domain controllers for resiliency. So you want to put all the DNS addresses here um, so we can contact all the domain controllers through DNS. It's also recommended to check to see if your DNS forwarder includes um, the Azure DNS server IP address. So this provides functionality such as virtual machine agent communications and the VM's ready state, health state, enables the VM to obtain an IP address via DHCP and enables the VM to leverage um, Azure DNS services. So UPN suffixes form part of the Active Directory AD logon names. We will use cloudinspired.co.uk to enable us to use this as the logon name. So we do this within Active Directory Domains and Trusts. If we don't add this here, when we create a user later, we would only have uh, the DNS name for our AD domain available, which is cloudinspired.local. Therefore, we need to add a .co.uk, so this forms part of our login.
So here we will now create our user accounts for our AD Connect application. So we need two accounts for an express setup. Okay, so we need a global administrator in Azure AD user, and we also need uh, an enterprise admin account within our um, Active Directory on-premise uh, domain. So first of all, we will create the Azure AD user. So if we go into Azure Active Directory, click on Users, click New User, Then if we type our username, and then in this case, we're going to choose our domain name, which is cloudinspired.co.uk. And if we type the password, and then if we click create, We also need to add this account as a global administrator as well within Azure. So if we go and click on the account and then we go to assigned uh, roles and if we click add and then type global administrator and then click OK and now that's added as a global administrator. So now within Active Directory we will create our enterprise account. So if we right click new user, give the user a name. And if we choose .co.uk, it's a suffix, type a password. Click next. And if we go to properties, go to members. And then if we type enterprise and then include this as an enterprise admin, click apply. We can see here where we changed the UPN suffix, if we didn't add that .co.uk in earlier, we would just be left with .local. Okay, so after all those steps, we are now ready to install AD Connect and are only a few short clicks away to extend on-premise directory uh, to the cloud. Um, so we will install uh, in express mode um, as we have a single forest topology and we'll use password hash synchronization for authentication. So express settings is a default option and is used for the most commonly deployed scenario. But of course, you know, this could be different for your situation. So please check depending on your setup requirements. OK, so I've used the um, Azure AD Connect application, which was downloaded when we added in the custom domain name earlier on. I'll put the links in the description if you need them. So if we click use express settings for this installation, so we need to connect to Azure AD with our global administrator account that we created earlier on. As you can see, we actually get an error. So if we try and just log in with that account, um, just on the Azure portal. So if we go to the Azure portal, we click login and we just test this account for login. And if we enter the password, Okay, we can see we were actually prompted to update our password. So that's the reason why we're getting a failure. So we'll update it and then we will now try again with an AD Connect. So if we go back to AD Connect, if we type the new password that we've just changed and then click Next, that should now connect to Azure AD with the global admin account. Okay, now it's asking us to connect to our on-premise Active Directory with the second account that we created. OK, so now we can see that our cloudinspired.co.uk domain that we added earlier is now verified. So now if we click Next, so now we're ready to configure and, and synchronize the directory with password hash synchronization. So if we click Next, I'm going to speed up this video now at this point because um, it takes a while and then um, I'll see you in a second. OK, so now that that's finished, let's check out um, Azure AD. So if we go into Azure AD and then if we go into um, Azure AD Connect, we can see there the, uh, the service is enabled, um, it's synchronized. Um, we can see password hash is enabled, single sign on is enabled. We now take a look at the users that have been synced from on prem to Azure AD. We can see that we've got um, our Windows Server AD uh, 
user account AD admin that we created earlier is now synced to Azure. We can see we've got our Azure Active Directory, um, Azure admin accounts that was also created and a couple of other users also that are synced. Okay, so let's create a test user within uh, Active Directory on premise. And then we'll sync this up using some PowerShell to Azure AD. So if we create a test user now, type the password. Okay, and then finish, and that's a user now created. Okay, so now if we go into PowerShell, and then if we type the command get hyphen AD sync scheduler, now this will show us um, the actual sync cycle. So at the moment it's set to 30 minutes by default to sync AD um, to Azure AD. And then it will just show the next um, sync cycle runtime uh, and the time it's gonna sync next. So when we installed AD Connect, uh, we did a full sync of the directory. So now we can actually sync um, just that one user by syncing the Delta. Um, and what the Delta does is it just syncs um, any outstanding um, objects which haven't, hasn't been synced during the full sync. We can also perform a, a full sync using the initial um, instead of the delta at the end of the command um, if required. We're not going to run that now because we've already done a full sync. So now we've done a sync, let's go into Azure AD and click uh, refresh so we can see um, our user here, our test user that we've created is now synced fully up to Azure. So now we can go into the Azure portal and we can log in with that uh, test account that was fully synced. So I hope you enjoyed the video. The next set of videos will be a step-by-step -step guide on Windows Virtual Desktop or VWD, which allows you to utilize this AD Connect setup by logging into Azure a web interface over the internet using synced Active Directory accounts. So this allows you to use a pool of Windows 10 desktops and publish applications um, over the internet. Also, we will cover um, Azure multi-factor authentication, um, looking at the different uh, licensing models. So thanks very much for watching the video. The links to the downloads and the comments are below in the description. Uh, please subscribe to the channel uh, to receive notifications when weekly videos are posted. So all the best uh, and take care. See you next time.